got a real scorcher here today. It's hot out today, folks. It's, it's really hot out today. It's a summer. It's a summer podcast. It's a podcast all about the summer. This is the summer edition of House of Decline. Uh-huh. We're officially in the middle of, uh, the, of uh, cancer season. That's Ooh. what I call it. I'm Because uh, I'm cancer. A crab. Well. It's cancer season. How many legs do crabs have? Uh, they got six. They got six legs. I know this for a fact because uh, I I pull pull out a lot of crab legs out of live crabs. It's my sick hobby. Out of your pubes? I pull them out of my cubes. Yes, I take the <laughs> my uh, cubed pubes. Your, yeah, your cubes these, or your pubes? My cubes. My cubes. How funny? Would, see, how funny would it be if it was? Hair. Yeah. How funny would it be if we uh, we all you know we all lived we all worked in pubicles you know. Yeah, we, we, they were just big sacks of scrotums. Oh, that man. We all, I hate going um, to work every day in my pubicle. It sucks. <laughs> There's just hair everywhere, yeah. man. It's just in my mouth constantly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh no, there's pubes on my tongue. And instead of uh, pubic hair, you had cubic hair. Which yeah. Which just came out by the cube. Oh, my like God. Like little blocks. Like Minecraft. Like a yeah, pixelated, and, like pixelated genitals. Yeah, the danger is that while you're sucking dick, the cube would get in your eye. The cube, mm. the cubic hair would get in your eye because of the corners. Got to watch out for the corners. Yeah, well, apparently Picasso was always complaining about his partner's cubic hair. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. If you look at if you look at pubes from every angle, they start to resemble cubes. That's yep. what I'm saying. Well. Well, we were just talking about Ontario Place, and I say it Ontario. Ontario, Ontario. Of course, that's the original pronunciation. It uh, looks nice. It looks nice. Um, it's a beautiful pl- Ontario Place. I went out there with yeah. a couple of buddies because <gasps> now it's a now it's a park full of urban decay, but it used to be beautiful. Just a couple of your PMC buddies, your yeah. PMC buddies there. My PMC buddies. Yeah, your private Wait, managerial PMC? class buddies. Oh. Oh yes, you're right. Were you guys expressing? I am part of a lease. You guys expressing class solidarity. <laughs> I am part of the power elite. Uh, <laughs> we, we we will form a super team called the power elite. Our power is money, not unlike Batman <laughs> or Iron Man. Ah, <laughs> uh, Iron Man. Yeah. What if one right. dumbass ru- ruled us all? <laughs> what if uh, What if Elon Musk just shot? <laughs> shot villagers uh, Elon Musk and Clen Klippenstein on Twitter have been getting into it have you been following that oh no what's the beef between Ken and Elon you, you know Ken Italian? Klippenstein right is he some sort he's a he's a left wing Twitter personality right slash invest, is he a, he's like also an, but he really he's an investigative journalist I think okay so um, Klippenstein uh-huh. what does Klippenstein say he's just been posting all of the different connections that Elon Musk has had with uh, Jeff Bezos I'm sorry not Jeff Bezos <laughs> with um, Jeff Epstein Jeffrey Epstein Jeff Epstein oh no so he's, Be- Bezos he's was Epstein there right Bezos there. was of course there they were all there um, and Elon blocked him <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny that Elon accused the Vietnamese guy. Of course, I get where Elon was coming from with that, because white dude in Vietnam, come on. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, odds are, nah, I'm kidding. Obviously, Elon was a fucking asshole. But thou doth protest too much, Elon. Mm-hmm. Maybe you are the pedo man. Maybe you wanted to make that sub so that the Vietnamese children couldn't escape while they were in the mini sub. Yeah. And you could have your way with them. Pedo Man, but it's just that Ween song, Ocean Man. Pedo Man, take me by the hand, meet me to the land that you understand. <laughs> yeah, that's Pedo good. Pedo Man, that's the good. water of a little St. James is mm. a real trip. Trip, trip Pedo trip, Man, trip, trip. the crust of a tan man light in the sand. <laughs> a dead CIA man a can. <laughs> Pedo Man. Oh, yeah, so there good. you go. It writes itself. I love I love I love Ween now, Alex. But but from really? afar, not not like you wanted me to. Okay, okay, I understand because you got you. It's it you got to become a Ween guy if you like Ween. I downloaded Which, all the albums. Yeah. I listened to most of them. The one um, with with Ocean Man on it's the best one. 
Yeah, the mollusk is generally yeah. agreed to be the best one. But, you know... Has the most variety, it's, has the it was, highest quality of songwriting. It was good to for me to approach it with some distance to music and being a musician now. I'm able to appreciate it more now that I'm not have, holding this fantasy in my head of being a musician. It's a lot easier mm-hmm. for me to appreciate music I didn't necessarily like before. Mm-hmm. Because, um... It's non. It's there's a whole ass like it's non-threatening to my own um, delusions of grandeur. Yeah, I think you know once you take art to be aspirational, you can sort of get in a block with that. You know, once you sort of build up your own idea that you have to be something or that you have to label yourself as a musician specifically, and you sort of get it into a loop in your head that you have to take it ultra seriously or else you're, it's nothing at all. And I think uh, mm-hmm. in order to really, I think Ween is sort of an insult to that. If, you, yeah. if you're if you thinking like that, which is why a lot of people don't like Ween for that reason. Right. Uh, because they managed to be uh, successful in their niche of goofiness. Of course, they were also horrible, desperate pillheads and divorced guys as well. So Oh, they're, that's pretty lives, funny. Yeah. They're we, not. We all become Ween. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually. Eventually we're trending to ween. It's called ween trippy. If there was a ween trippy, it's the, yeah, it's how to channel divorced guy energy into good vibes, you know, right. as opposed to that. Oh, my God. Because think of all the divorced guy energy out there. If we could just so concentrate it, mm-hmm. like, into, like, the fucking Ghostbusters wheelhouse, and then the EPA comes in and releases all the divorced guy energy, and it blows up New Jersey or something like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, man. We need a vacuum to suck up divorce guy energy. I've been thinking about this a lot because I've been playing Luigi's Mansion. Thinking about what if we... Does he have have a vacuum? vacuum. He sucks up the ghost with a vacuum. That's the main thrust of Luigi's Mansion. Okay. But I like the idea of a spiritual vacuum. It's it's funny to me. And I like the idea of of Mm -hmm. there's this something that can absorb metaphysical things. Brother of Jumpman. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Luigi. Jump bro. Weege. Wow. The scaredy cat bro. He's a coward. He represents the cowardice within us all. But that's, he's fighting these ghosts competently because I'm controlling him, I guess. Presumably if I wasn't controlling Luigi, he would just fucking shit his pants and die. Yeah. That's funny. That would be a funny concept for a game where if you don't control the protagonist, it just shits itself and dies. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you could, yeah, a very accurate survival horror game. Yeah. Oh, man. Well, that would be in poor taste, just a survival horror game, but it's Auschwitz. Oh, what do you mean? Oh, it, oh, 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 you mean like, oh, okay. Yeah, that would be, that would be bad. That would be extremely poor taste. Um, more than poor taste, perhaps. Schindler's List the game. Perhaps it would even be criminal. You don't think you could make a survival horror game about Auschwitz? Um, probably not, no. I mean, you couldn't release it in Europe. Um, like, even uh, Wolfenstein had to have edit, had, like, they had to do a whole process for the European release of Wolfenstein. But you see, the Nazis are the bad guys in this. <laughs> well, they are technically in Wolfenstein as well, but they had to, like, um, take all the Nazi imagery out for the European release. That's I I guess they're afraid that Nazis no, it's just will against the law. start playing this. No, it's game. against yeah, the law. So, yeah, right, they have right. laws against that. You can't do Nazi imagery. Just in the EU? Well, That's in Germany at EU least, but I know thing? France yeah. has really intense laws. Um, okay. And probably not England cuz yeah. I don't I don't know what's going on there. Uh, it just comes back in a different form. Look at how well Marine Le Pen is pulling in France. Is she? I don't even know anymore. You don't. You're not following beautiful French politics. I don't know. Beautiful. I just. I just saw. I saw a graphic recently that said that Marine Le Pen was trending. Yeah. Hey, dude. speaking of uh, Pedo Man. Yeah. Uh, guess what happened? Oh, are you talking uh, about the arrest of our our lady in waiting? Our lady, our lady in waiting, Ghislaine. 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 Isn't it pronounced Maxwell. Ghislaine? It's Ghislaine. Ghislaine and Maxwell. It's, and it's lady. Her, she's a lady. She's, she's lady a lady. Ghislaine. Lady Ghislaine. Lady G. Another lady G. Uh, she will. 
uh, she, a lot of people are, are, are saying she's going to die. Yeah, Epstein's she's going to get dies. COVID and die. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a lot of people are saying that she's just going to be a patsy and they're going to cut her a sweetheart deal so they can just end it with her. Uh, a lot of people are saying that maybe she actually does know nothing, and she was, uh, and she she is just a patsy. She her role was overblown in her relationship with Epstein. Well, but probably. I not. don't know. She was a madam. She was absolutely a madam. Yeah, it sounds to me like she was procuring young girls and doing illegal shit. Yeah, she was really big pimping. You know the song "Big Pimping" by um, famous rapper Notorious B.I.G. Uh, isn't it by Jay Z? Jay Z? Oh, I was. Yeah. I would. Uh, I would have to refer to my encyclopedia. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. But yeah, Big Pimpin' is Jay Z. It is Jay Z. Yeah. Big, yeah. It has that sweet flute sample. Oh. Is that um? But the point is, uh, Gislaine. Uh, she's big pimpin'. She's actual big pimpin'. J J Z wishes he was pimpin' that big. And that's the uh, shakuhachi uh, featured on Big Pimpin'. The flute. That's, it. that's the shakuhachi, man. Mm. Mm. This is the classic Japanese woodwind instrument, the shakuhachi. Nice. I would uh, like I would like <laughs> shakuhachi samples on most of my pimpin' related songs. It yeah, is man. the pimpest flute. The shakuhachi is obviously. <laughs> The flute most associated with child trafficking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. In Peter and the Wolf, we'll use the shakuhachi to represent the child traffickers. <laughs> yeah, well, the, the, when you Google saku, uh, shakuhachi, it's it's a picture of a white guy with earrings playing it. So. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> No. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, uh, it, it can all you fits imagine in. how many Japanese guys are rolling in their graves? <laughs> really? Oh, because oh, we're making fun of um, their beautiful no, classical flute? No, just, flu? because, just because a white guy with earrings is... is oh. If that's the yeah. first image that comes up on Google. It's yeah. not a... <laughs> well, not probably. let me go to Japanese Google. Go to Japanese. Ah, uh, I see. Google Chat. Let's, let's see what's on Japanese Google. JP Google. I, it is I, JP Google, the proprietor of Google. <laughs> All this time I was fooling you with the frontage of Sergey and Larry, but it was me, JP Google. Um, yeah, so interestingly enough, no white guy with earrings as the first result. <laughs> but if you scroll down, you will, you do get to that. See, this is the true censorship, really. We are, we are uh, enlightening the shakuhachi. Mm. Uh, with Google's uh, notorious, notoriously racist algorithm. Yeah, <laughs> your fucking racist algorithm, Google. Yeah, we're uh, we're just a nation of algorithms now. You know, it's kind of sad. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about yeah. it. Yeah. When you start to really understand how and what and where an algorithm is, you know, when you Bro. really dig your fingers into it. Just because we're robots doesn't mean we can't be bros. <laughs> what does the theory that we're all in a simulation do to historical materialism? Does it validate it? Um, Man, uh, well, Elon Musk really heavily believes in that theory. And if you do believe we're all in a simulation, then it basically gives you carte blanche to fuck kids. So <laughs> no, it doesn't. So There's I'm still saying. rules. No, I mean, there's rules, but if you if you don't believe there is an actual metaphysical reality, it means that none of your actions actually have consequences. Well, it's bad for the rest of us in the simulation. Uh, not if you hide it on Little St. James Island. Mm, well, no, but it's still bad because um, maybe it's, you know, when you when the rules of the simulation are broken, maybe there was negative effects for everyone. Who's, who's, who's running like it anyway? Who's running this know. simulation? Huh? I feel like it's a very common thing for sociopaths to sort of justify their sociopathy by concluding that none of this is real. Or like none of this means anything. Or like mm. it's it's sort of like a nihil like there are different types of hedonism, right? And this is a nihilistic hedonism. Whoa. Well Wah. Well Well, I don't know. I think there can be sort of like a positive 
hedonism or like a, a, a nurturing hedonism mm. in contrast to yeah, that, a nihilistic one. That's getting into like the realm of polytheism and spirits and shit. Lay it on. I love spirits. Let's midsummer the fuck out of yeah, this shit. Like, Dressing uh, flowers, kill our boyfriends yeah. and whatnot. <laughs> I still have to watch Midsummer. I want to watch it. It's apparently the gir- girls r- or a girls rock movie of the it year. It is the girls rock movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, it's great. I love Midsummer. Is so wonderful. I had a friend who's who's a very uh, lovely man, and he uh, painted a picture of his girlfriend in. Uh, <laughs> Flowers, and he uh, the caption he it, it was very nice painting, did a, a great job, but uh, it looked like uh, the lady from Midsummer, and the caption was uh, a painting for my May Queen, and I didn't want to I I private messaged him said you know how it turns out for the boyfriend in that movie right <laughs> right <laughs> uh, spoilers I guess you haven't seen it yet well but he I fucking f- dies I figured that the girls kill all the boys is that what happens? yeah you got it you got it well oh, the girl kills one of the boys not all of them uh, some of the boys help with the killing the po- it's not gendered but uh, it's more uh, people that sort of uh, balk at the idea of community who have embraced sort of this uh, distance and isolation are the mm-hmm. ones that sort of deserve. Uh, to be punished. Oh no! Which is nice. They're go- that's me. They're gonna. Get- <laughs> <laughs> they're gonna. You mean they're gonna? This I. But I am Swedish, sort of. <laughs> they're gonna you kill got the me. Blue eyes. They're gonna kill me. No. Uh, yeah. It's a really good movie. Ari Aster is a very good director. I I want to see what he does next. I liked Hereditary. Hereditary. I found out that my grandfather six generations ago. So my great 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 grandfather was a was a scholar of the Talmud. Okay, was he was he Jewish or yeah. was just like yeah. interesting from Russia? Weird, right? All right, you got an Elizabeth Warren amount of Jew in you. I do. I do <laughs> nah, indeed, nah, sir. Yeah, yeah. Yes, I do. Oh, uh, Israel, uh, may I come in? I am one <laughs> one sixteenth. Yes, come, please. Uh, I have my 23 and me results. You have to let me in. <laughs> Israel's Home for the, all Jews. Israel's the one nice place left in the world. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, 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 no. That's funny. Uh, uh, did we talk about sucks. it before where there, it, people are like, that with the food, they're like falafel and um, they're like, oh, yeah, Israeli food, like falafel. They invented it. Yeah. And in, people get very mad about in it. 19, the Palestinians obviously yeah. get very mad about it because they, they fucking invented it. In 1947, it. the falafel was invented. Okay, we can't rehash old pod content. This is really this is really what the whole Israeli-Palestine conflict was about. I mean, it's damn good food. and if It, it is apparently, damn good vegetarian food appara- because it's fried into oblivion and unhealthy. And you know, it's the best diet for a long <laughs> life. A Mediterranean diet. Yes, Man. and lots of shells on Gazan children. Hey, hey. Shelling the Gazan children. <laughs> they, We're shelling the Gazan children. They We're dangerously the Gazan children. attempted shelling a, shelling a, shelling to throw a, shelling some shelling stones. The children. They dropped a rock on that guy's head and he died. Oh, we're shelling Ahmed and we're shelling Abdul. Shelling Ahmed and we're shelling Abdul. Israeli <laughs> army <laughs> IDF <laughs> away. <laughs> Oh boy! Uh, Cause everything there was is gay. Da, 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 da. Gay soldiers what? in the IDF. Well, Are there? Okay, so yeah, of course, Israel is home to the. So that's another confusing aspect of anti-Islamism, where you will see like people say, uh, "Fuck, fuck the Muslims. They hate the gays. Look at Israel. They love the gays. So it's okay to shell the Gazan children because they hate the gays." Hmm. And it's like, so there's this, but you will see a lot of homo-nationalist gays sort of embrace this. This is a version of white supremacy that suits their sort of liberal ideology. Well, if someone obviously uh, is religiously and thus axiomatically motivated to want to destroy me, then I have been given the opportunity to destroy them with extreme hostility, which is why you see a lot of gay people who are very, uh, like, pro- Middle East intervention. 
hmm. because they think, yeah, we have to fucking civilize that region. The pod, That's the why pod you see Johns. a lot of gay Jews who yeah. are Zionists. We're talking about yeah. the pod Johns now. It's the pod Johns. Yeah. It's a bunch of fucking gay <laughs> Jews. No, they are neither gay well, nor there Jewish. Are, there are, there are, Is one of them Jewish? One of them is one, Jewish, I right? think we got some Jew and some gay in there. Not to be... Not to be saying that there's anything wrong with that. No, no, but it's home and act, it's one of the ways that. But the Pod you will, want to yeah. invade all the Middle Eastern countries. So yeah, it's a very clever way of getting you to be racist because it's like it. It basically says that all Muslims, by dint of their religion, mm. uh, and you know people will say, well, Muslim is not a race. Well, yeah, but when you say Muslims in the American consciousness, it only conjures up one image, and it's of people in a general region. You're not really thinking of Indonesians. It's we don't have a scourge of Indonesian terrorists. You know, right. you don't have a scourge of Bengali terrorists. You know, it's you're thinking of one type of Muslim when you say the word Muslims. You know what we mean. <laughs> the Saudi Arabian <laughs> you know ones, the ones. <laughs> What? So mu- Muslims, they're, they're, they're anti-gay. What, you mean like Western landed Muslims in Dearborn, Michigan? No, you know the ones <laughs> we mean. You know. <laughs> the ones we want to kill. <laughs> Here, vamp for me for a second. Hold on, I gotta take care of something. It's vamping. I don't have any banter to go on. So I'm just singing, just singing my song all day long. Singing like a master chef. Yeah, so this is the perfect time to say that I really, uh, I'm not, we're, we're not fans of Israel. This is the official <laughs> stance on Israel of the House of the Cloud podcast. Not fans. Uh, they tried to make me go on birthright once. I did, they didn't try and make me go to birthright once. I was um, I phoned the guy and he was very aggressive. You what? You want to you want to go to Israel? You should come to Israel. It's a beautiful land. Oh and I God. said, uh, you're being a little aggressive, birthright guy. And he was like, what? You don't want to come? You don't want to experience your birthright? What are you pro Palestine? <laughs> what are you doing? And I said, maybe this will be for another day. And I aged. Now I'm aged out of birthright. I can't go on birthright anymore. Well. Um, I just got back from my little trip upstairs, but mm-hmm. it sounded like you aged out of birth right at the right time. Yeah. What is Not the age? Israel. What's the age? Oh, I also, during the time you were away, I said our official uh, stance on Israel for House of Decline. For oh, I missed it? Fuck. Is... Yeah. We're not fans. That's our st- oh. <laughs> That's our big yeah, political stance I agree. on Israel. I'm a fan of not Palestine. Fans. I'm a Palestine fan. Yeah, they're the underdogs. They're the Mets. The Palestines, the, I'm calling it now, they're the Mets of uh, political geopolitics, you know? <laughs> they're in the same region as the Yankees, but they're scrappy, and, you know, they're fighting for the same, they're fighting for the same audience. So do you think they're going to bring sports back? Uh, they're trying. They're trying God. to bring playoffs back. God, I hope they bring sports back, and it just causes a huge... I'm pro-pandemic now. I just want more cases. It'd be great if all of the athletes died or oh, were just so crippled by mm. COVID that they couldn't play anymore. Yeah. And then you had just uh, all of the B-tier athletes, so sports are just shitty for, like, five years because they have all the guys that are, like, missing free throws in the NBA. Oh, my God. I would love to, an entire entire NBA team is <laughs> just missing free throws because they're too sick from COVID. They keep, yeah, they keep bringing back the NBA, but they can't get the COVID done. So, like, suddenly I'm recruited to be in the NBA. <laughs> that would be a funny premise. That's okay. That's my sports movie, or a bunch of regular Joes. <laughs> they kept, they kept, uh, uh, they kept reopening sports leagues, and all the athletes are sick. And now a bunch of regular Joes have to play wow. sports remotely from their own houses for entertainment. That is and kind of then. It's kind of like build basketball. a community. Yeah, yeah, it's exactly like basketball, but it's a timely premise. Man, ba- and there a- needs to be a basketball for every generation. An underdog sports movie comedy. I don't know what it was for the lad. Remember the replacements with Keanu Reeves? <laughs> it was an underdog sports movie comedy. Um, you know what movie is fucking insane if you just think about it a little a little? Remember the movie Invincible with Mark Wahlberg, which is all about the veneration of a fucking scab? Um, doesn't he take some kind of pill for that? 
Invincible? What 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 is Invincible? No, you're thinking of Limitless. Oh. That's the one where Bradley Cooper takes Super Adderall and becomes yeah, an yeah. ultra author and stock investor. And Robert De Niro really phones it in in that movie. I'm talking about Invincible, the one which is the movie about uh, Mark Wahlberg, and he plays a, a barkeeper who the NFL players are on strike, so they start holding drafts for regular-ass Joes, and he makes it. Okay. So it's a, all about a movie about how scabs are good. Yeah, I see. It's Oh, I want to watch this. It's set in 1976. <laughs> yeah. And it's a Disney movie? And it's Mark Wahlberg and pretending to be in 1976. That sounds hilarious. Oh, it's in 1976, Mark Wahlberg. I'm wearing bell bodies, just like Boogie Nights. <laughs> I have no idea what's going on. Greg Kinnear's in it. Mm. Uh, sounds Greg like a Kinnear. good one. Yeah. Actually, Invincible. What I've been watching is 90 Day Fiance. That, that's a classic of trash. Have you seen? I've heard it's good. Yeah, watch no, it. No, what is the premise? Highly recommend it's, it. it's just a bunch of like horribly awkward incels and a bunch of Russian and Malaysian ladies and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, but they're not horribly awkward incels. So, there's like one per season, but it runs the gamut. It's, you know, the K-1 visa uh, is what you get when you um, are marrying to come to America. You have 90 days to get married, and it's 50% fake, I think, or scripted by TLC. Mm -hmm. It's got that scripted vibe, but it's just wacky enough to be addictive and crazy, and I recommend mm -hmm. it. It's on Hulu. Okay. Please we don't sponsor get us, Hulu, Hulu. in Canada. What? Oh, you don't get Create Hulu? Create a Canadian Hulu. <laughs> it's probably on Canadian Hulu. I mean... We don't have Canadian Hulu. What? We don't, we don't got Hulu up here. What? Dude, the internet is what? Just go, just get a VPN. I guess I could get a VPN. Yeah, get a VPN. I'll get a VPN. The countries Express are... VPN sponsor us. These countries, these nation states, just trying to restrict the free flow of information really grinds my gears. Yeah, I don't know how you can be into like internet. I don't. I don't know how you can be like a libertarian and not into like total internet freedom. Like, there are some people who are libertarian that were, like, saying net neutrality is bad, actually. Because it means that corporations who should be, because they're the best, should be, hmm. like, given their due and controlling the internet. You know, you set up a telecom, you set up and maintain a telecom or whatever. Um, I, I don't know. I don't follow the libertarians that closely. Who was that guy who was, um... Corey Doctorow? Was that the guy who was eventually shown to be like a massive pedo? I don't know. He was a big internet liberty guy? No, it wasn't Corey Doctorow. It was Richard Stallman. Sorry, Corey Doctorow. What? Richard, <laughs> what? Richard Stallman is not a pedo. Isn't he a pedo? No. Look up Richard Stallman. I know who pedo. Richard Stallman is. He's not a pedo. Okay. Richard Stallman okay. was the main contributor to the GNU Linux system. And the Free Software Foundation. I think he might be a pedo, He's dude. not a pedo at all. Okay. That is okay. a smear um, <laughs> done against him. Okay. He made. I don't know. He, he's a, he has, most likely has autism. Okay. And has Wait, made... What happened? Wasn't there some controversy where they found some sort of uh, uh, suspicious... Uh, underage thing remarks like uh, I think he said yeah. some pretty libertarian. He made stuff libertarian about remarks fucking. about stuff he's not involved in at all because people were basically what happened is when the Epstein stuff happened, he made a FIBA file remarks. Uh, right? Mm, he made weird remarks, but it was because Epstein's connected to MIT. Mm. Um, and MIT gave him. Or, I'm sorry, Epstein gave MIT a lot of money. Hell yeah, to, for, to research pedo technology. <laughs> okay, no. Well, Richard Stallman is a, sort of like a eccentric genius person who talks about stuff on his blog he shouldn't. But <laughs> number one, Richard Stallman has really is not done anything wrong at all. All he did was write an essay where there's this other guy, Marvin Minsky, who was on... Epstein's Island, and Stallman's making a comment that for people who are, he, he's just conjecturing that in a plausible scenario, the person who is on Epstein's Island might not necessarily think the girls are being coerced. 
And so <laughs> that's not great because, like, of course they are. <laughs> that's bad. <laughs> but Richard Stallman himself uh, has really only made the error of saying dumbass shit, which we all do. Yeah. And he's done a lot of good for the computing world in terms of keeping um, keeping it out of the hand, like, uh, to some degree, keeping operating systems out of the hands of just exclusively corporations. There you, you have convinced me, Stephen. You have you have rehabilitated Stallman in my in my brain. From He's this a, one he, piece of popular consciousness. I mean, he got canceled pretty hard, also. Mm-hmm. Um, for having the for for, for writing having that, a very bad take for having but, a, just uh, a very bad take on Epstein's Island, but yeah. not actually being connected to anything bad himself. All yeah, that they he could, was never photographed on Epstein's plane. They had like Lawrence Krauss was the, Stephen Pinker was the worst that he did. Like, I mean, he he has mental illness as well. He walks around barefoot. He yeah. does not groom. He smells terrible by all accounts. He lived in his office at MIT. So he's not like a well met person, but he's someone <laughs> who like sh- needs a lot. Like he needs like a minder. Mm-hmm. It's just sad. He's an eccentric, is is what you're saying? Yeah. He's a lovable eccentric, which what well, had a very bad take. He's not love. He's not lovable. Okay, he's an unlovable but eccentric. He's like one, a guy who is, like you know, down to his core, believes in a free, as in like, liberty, for software. Mm-hmm. Free software. Freedom. Yeah. So he's important. Freedom. You can't just cancel. Freedom. Him for being yeah. gross. Okay, I cancel him for one yeah. gross. I think he's had like multiple gross bad takes, but no, yeah, he's done sure. nothing. Yeah, I, he's done nothing that would actually warrant a full on fuck this guy and erase his legacy of good shit from history. Well, I mean that can happen as well, but I just I would draw I draw the line at actually saying he is a pedophile because he's, he is not. He is absolutely not. I was speaking in hyperbole and i now regret it it's okay because i do like richard stallman it's okay i regret it i apologize to you stallman you big gross important weirdo <laughs> yeah. The, yeah the the big the bigger picture is that you don't have a free software movement without richard stallman who is crazy mm-hmm. but you know he's can't he's definitely for saying the, the shit that he said is cancelable i mean he's I don't think he's as bad as Chris D'Elia, but you know. <laughs> yeah, he, he wasn't. He wasn't grooming young MIT girls. He wasn't grooming at all, because he's because right. he's Richard Stallman, I mean, the nerdiest man yeah, in tech. Like the be- got a beard down to his belly button. It's one dreadlock. It's what. It's the dread beard. Yeah, I mean, he, he's also like declared public enemy number one by Microsoft. <laughs> yeah, he was like. Uh, I feel like. Guys like Aaron Schwartz followed in his footsteps. You yeah. feel like Aaron Schwartz would be be very disappointed with what Reddit has become. <laughs> um, maybe I have no idea. Reddit sucks now. That's annoying. Did it not used to suck? Uh, it kind of always sucked. I I feel it always sucked, but it was just it was just had a good content aggregation format, and that has bloomed into an annoying subculture. Well, now Which that I they've guess. started banning subreddits for more than like just vi- rule normal rule violations, um, they've banned like a lot of the places that the people who make the good content were at, and so they're gonna. That's the death of Reddit, in my opinion, because mm-hmm. they banned the Chopper subreddit yeah, and the Come Down subreddit, which both goods. Which I mean. I get the Chapo subreddit. I don't really get the Chapo subreddit because the first time they got in trouble was by saying it's cool to kill slave masters, which is like, well, they were posting like John Brown appreciation pics and saying like it's cool to kill slave masters, and then like the Reddit mods were just like saying don't incite violence. Hmm. I was just like, bro, what? I mean, I don't know. I think it's. I, I mean, the theory is that, you know, because they wanted to ban the Donald for a long time, they now have to ban something that is seen as the equivalent to the Donald, but on the other side. 
Yeah. Uh, so it, they because the Reddit is libs. They're libs. What do you want? Yeah, Reddit That's is what they do. Is run by the Pod Johns. Yeah. Uh, so it, it has a. I think that's. It's weird that the Donald would emerge on Reddit because, uh, I think I think the the theory that liberalism, far more than, uh, I so what Libs would say is that fascism appears as a reaction to communism, but what uh, communists or just leftists would say is that liberals just enable fascism, and fascism uses the language of communism to. Uh, create a populist frothing mass uh, and then uh, shifts the game and then turns the, the tables on an economic other that they can continually destroy in order to create a false sense of economic organization. Per, well, perhaps. I'm still, I still in the realm of uh, thinking that perhaps capitalism is being superseded by something different. Where, um, well, you have said before on this on this yeah. cast yeah. that we, we you don't truly believe we live in capitalism, well, the, or at least there was uh, you you sort it's more of a corporate welfare state that doesn't well, really resemble no, no, no. capitalism. Different. Yeah. It's that it's uh, there's like a new currency, sort of not really, or a new mode of production. So there's like something new where instead of it being capital. And okay, so this is what Mackenzie Wark is saying, and I'm still reading this, so it's in development, but in my head, I mean, it's in development. There's a new mode of production, and it's information. And the people who are controlling things are in the sort of class of people who have access to information, not necessarily capital. So... Mackenzie Work came up with this theory and has a whole like way of thinking about it, and I came up with like a similar conclusion, but from a different, just from looking at um, evidence based on what the government's doing in response to the pandemic. So I, I'm, so I'm taking you, my so conclusion and sort of comparing notes with what the, she's written. The control of information, this information as currency theory that you have, where you can exchange information mm. for. Well, no, no, no. It's not like that. You're not. It's not like based on exchange value it's sort of based like on you can't take your information and convert it to i widgets and then yeah you know, well that's just because that's just capitalism but you switch the names yeah. so this is still something different and it's sort of the the highest class in the hierarchy is able to aggregate like get it like a huge amount of data on everything mm-hmm. And then since they have that, that is like a huge boon to them and they're able mm-hmm. to maybe even live longer than the rest of us. Like people like Peter Thiel who can, who, or Jeff Bezos who have information now on how everyone lives. He and the people in his class can use that information to their own ends in a way that we'll never be able to. Mm -hmm. Because with, like, the Amazon Alexa, he can find out, you know, based on um, crunching the numbers Mm. on everyone after a while, like, what types of people have longer lives. He can get all kinds of info on, like, what time. And then, of course, the other aspect of that is that that data is what is we are generating in terms of that we are the product. That is the... When but it's not capitalism because it's not really a market, but it's sort of a byproduct of capitalism, but resembling a new way of organizational power based around the consolidation of a small class of oligarchs yeah. having access to far more information than anyone yes. else. Yeah, and so it, they're, they, they're accumulating information rather than capital, mm-hmm. right? Do you follow but you that? can't trade information because it, it can't be traded, but it still can be used. I don't know in terms about trading. It is the fact that you can trade capital. What is what is unique to it? Because there's. I think I think that's what's valuable about capital, right? Capital exists to be sort of uh, the, the the something only ex- its value is only in the fact that it can be exchanged for something of. You need to assess its worth in order for it to have a place mm-hmm. in the market. Okay. 
I mean, once you once something isn't on the market, it's not part of a capitalist system, really. Even though a capitalist system subsumes and uh, a, a, a capitalist system dictates its value even outside of the system when it's not on the market, which is what we have now. But this informational system, you're saying, does dictate value, but it's not there is like there is trading of information i suppose but it doesn't resemble a market system it resembles more of this like it it resembles these gigantic mushroom beasts these this you know how like the biggest living organism in the world is like this tree in oregon mm -hmm. that like whose roots cover like uh two square miles or something like that and all of these like fungal growths and this gigantic ecosystem is a part of it it's sort of like that it's these it's these tree gods that, that are uh controlling everything and only confer with each other sort of like a republic of people that have the infrastructure set up through capitalism to create this uh power elite network mm-hmm uh, so yeah, I would say, but you know, the the closest thing we have to that is feudalism. We, once again, we come back mm, to feudalism, yeah. where barons, you know, just have access to this gigantic infrastructure. Yeah, that's and the, the uh, that's the yeah. kind of the um the issue in the book by the book by Mackenzie War Capital is dead. Is that is this something new or is it something we've seen before, sort of disguised as something new? Yeah, I'm pretty flat circly, so I say, you know, we're just back to barons. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, maybe. I haven't gotten, I've only finished the introduction, so I've only sort of had the different <laughs> arguments. But it's not a very yeah. long book, it's only 100 pages. So oh, there you go. I should be able to finish, get, make my way through it. Mackenzie Wark! Yeah, but that's a, that's a cool idea. I like the idea of different systems of power emerging, how we distribute and how people sort of manipulate and control the world around them and how they control society mm -hmm. yeah uh which is really under in understanding power it's how do you get people to do things you want them to do well uh, one way to think about the information as as a new form of or a new mode of um i don't know what we're talking about something that replaces capital it's uh if you if you consider walmart what has made Walmart powerful is that it has a, an amazing logistics system for getting and moving all kinds of products around. And that logistics system is basically information. So they control information on how to get all of this crap moved around in a way to maximize their profit. Mm -hmm. And so... What are yeah, they... it's like a neural network. Say in like an undeveloped brain where something takes like something has to pass through five neurons in order for an action, like mm -hmm. uh, action to happen. Walmart, it only has to pass through one. And another thing that they're doing in order to like collect the information is they collect information from their workers and from their shoppers in order to refine the algorithm that they use. And so it's this sort of, it's superseding, eventually, like, eventually will we even be using currency or will we, the, the act of us walking into Walmart and making a selection on what we want, will that be providing to them enough payment for the good itself? Wouldn't it, it would be funny if we banned private corporations from gathering data? Yeah, that's, <laughs> we should. We should probably do that. That would be so hilarious that we could catch people. They were gathering data. And, and so is that... They were taking surveys. Is it different? It, has, has it, are we still in capitalism when it's not about the money we're making that allows us to buy the goods, but it's about the information that uh, yeah. we provide as individuals? Well, I think capitalism... It is, it is about capitalism in as much as this was the this was the precedent before this new system before mm -hmm. this new mm -hmm. sort of technology in the same way that marx thought that capitalism because it generated wealth so effectively created the lack of material scarcity nece necessary for communism um it, what it actually did was create uh this gigantic uh data factory 
that only seven people can access and <laughs> use to shape the world to their whim. I mean, that's obviously hyperbolic, but it, seven people, it, it's more like a couple thousand people. Hmm. But that's still like a very small minority of the humans on this earth that ultimately decide how this planet goes and have way more power. They, Those are the people that actually have the ability to stop global warming. Like, not us with, like, we can't sacrifice enough plastic straws in our own life. But these people <laughs> can make the actual decisions to, like, stop stop shipping as much stuff yeah <laughs> walmart needs to go down yeah or just yeah uh, uh, go from a less globalized uh or have a globalized economy in terms of like electronic in terms of e-commerce but manufacturing should be uh brought down to the local level exclusively because hmm. you know a huge amount of uh the our carbon footprint is just shipping 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 yeah yeah. I wonder do you think it's what well do you think it's less what if um what if it's actually less polluting to to have it be a globalized network? Mm. Is that stupid? Is that a stupid thing to say? Like if we did all the manufacturing here in America, would we maybe pollute even more? Or It's possible. I have no fucking Cuz we used to I'm be no... the number one polluter until we outsourced all of our manufacturing to China and now they're the number one polluter. I think the idea would be if you live in a globalized world, the idea is to have a globalized set of environmental standards. So no country can really. And it's the same way, you know, the reason why um, profit never stopped is because once we entered. A, so Marx thought, right, that eventually profit would start diminish and diminish and diminish. But as the globalized economy came about. And uh, we realized that it became extremely cheap to use overseas labor. Uh, we could artificially inflate that profit going up. But um, now it started to go back down again. And we realized we live in globalized world. <laughs> so you know, maybe why not set the standards? So there's no incentive to manufacture in China over manufacturing in America besides whichever resource is closest. Um, not to change the topic, but I think we might need to. Did you uh, did you happen to catch that that movie trailer or show trailer for the new Seth Rogen thing, where he's playing a guy who comes back from the past after being pickled for one hundred years? <laughs> no, he's playing. A, so Seth Rogen is. I don't. I don't. It may have been fake, but I hope it's not. I think it might be real. Seth Rogen is playing two parts. He's playing his great 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 grandfather, who was a Russian Jew who fell into a vat of pickling fluid, right. and then survived to wake up a hundred years later. Classic. With your you know fail son version of Seth Rogen being like, oh, I'm a millennial. Oh, I can't handle my 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 zady. It's yeah. all up in my grill. I'm a I'm a millennial without <laughs> a really a very fulfilling job. <laughs> What can you do? You, I cannot relax. I can right. never relax. So I have too much. So you should him. have some weed, Zadie. <laughs> it's those two voices the whole time, yeah. just arguing okay. with each other. There you go. Oh, boy. Uh, Sounds like a classic. Uh, we I got a Seth Rogen classic on her. <laughs> I like Seth Rogen. He's okay. Mm. He is very okay. I want to cancel him. What, I, can you cancel him? Yeah. Did he do blackface? No. Let's just make up that Seth Rogen did blackface. Oh, John Hamm did blackface. He did on the 30 Rock show. So are we going to cancel John Hamm? Or are we going to no, keep having sexy, sexy dreams about him? He's too handsome. Handsome. He's too handsome. <laughs> uh, did January want, Jones do blackface? <laughs> January Jones did blackface. Everyone in Mad Men did blackface. They cut out the... It was really smart of them to cut... Because in that one episode, Roger Sterling does blackface. Yep. But they're all cringing at him. And... See, they didn't remove that one because it's in context. Well, they it's added the a, they, they're adding an explainer. Did you see that? Yeah, they added a content warning, yeah. But I guess, did you need a content where the show is like plenty of incredibly racist moments before that? I mean, the, did you Mad Men is, should be canceled altogether. Yeah, wasn't Matthew Weiner one of the Me Too guys? I don't, well, probably. I just think uh, yeah. that whole show, it's just, you know, better cancel it. Better safe than sorry. And have yes. some um, have some media that might what what's the scare that the what are, 
I I don't think this is just like it's gonna I, make I think people this racist. Is, I think a lot of people identify this as bland tokenism by institutions in order to show this this public that they I, a bunch of out of touch executives the rabble are gonna come for us <laughs> BLM are gonna come for us if we don't make a gesture of of ill fated goodwill. And so, what do we got? What do we got? Uh, Tina Fey likes blackface. Okay, axe her. Throw her under the bus. Did she get thrown <laughs> under the bus? Yeah, thirty because Thirty Rock has a bunch of blackface episodes. Ooh, and she probably uh, wrote it. She yeah. probably wrote that. She wrote some of them. Oh, I don't know, Thirty Rock had a pretty black uh, writing staff, uh, but that, maybe they regret hmm. it. I don't know what Donald Glover has to say about this. Donald what Glover. What does Donald? Yeah, Donald Glover was a writer for Thirty Rock. He's a very you know, I, I respect Childish Gambino's comedy writing chops. He was in a couple of episodes. And 30 Rock is a great show. Still holds up. Um, I I think, like, yeah, for some reason, she only likes putting Jane Krakowski in blackface. Jane Krakowski is Jenna from 30 Rock. <laughs> oh, you... man. Imagine being that actress and, and kind of being against the blackface scenes and having Tina Fey convince you. <laughs> oh, nah, it's gonna be funny, uh, <laughs> Tina. I don't know. Do you think this is gonna age particularly it's well? No, Jenna's a moron. They're gonna get it. Oh the audience isn't stupid. Oh my god! Oh. You know, actually, be... yeah, Tina Fey could write a pretty good sketch about convincing someone to do black. I would be so pissed. Uh, oh, I don't know. You gotta, you gotta own it. Like in in Curb Your Enthusiasm, when Michael Richards is having an argument with a black person, he says, "I wish there was a word that I could call you that would make you as hurt and as and upset as I am." Right so now. you're watching Curb now, though, right? For the first yeah. time. Yeah. Well, that Unfettered. came out at that. The thing about that episode that came out at the time. It came out it at very... a perfect time. Yeah. For it, it to come out with the Seinfeld reunion stuff. Is that the whole Seinfeld reunion series yeah. season? Yeah, that is. Oh, it's a very funny season. It's a good time to be. Mm-hmm. I wish I was just living inside of a Curb Your Enthusiasm season. <laughs> you know, my whole yeah. life. Curb Your Enthusiasm seasons have more of an arc to them than my life. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, what it go? <laughs> my, our, the arc to our lives became go home, stay home. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's so uh, funny, man. Do you think the next Curb Your Enthusiasm season is going to be the lockdown season? I, it better be like stay in it one room. It got renewed, yeah. Oh. And it's just him and Leon. It's like just 12 bottle episodes of him and Leon. Oh man, they're just killing bottle after bottle of like <laughs> liqueur. Just like yeah. weird, sweet liqueur. I can't do these drinking contests with you anymore. <laughs> I can't do it, Leon. <laughs> Yeah, well, oh, Larry David passed. Um, he missed the bullet, or what's the phrase? He he, he passed the buck. He, passed, he, he, he missed the mark. No, he, he escaped. The he escaped from a fate of a Bernie Sanders presidency, where he'd have to go on SNL yeah. every every Saturday. So, oh, my Saturdays are ruined. <laughs> yeah, gr- great, good for can't him. Can't play golf anymore. <laughs> I can't. That's my terrible, terrible Larry David impression. Could it be any worse? Mm. Have you heard a worse Larry David? My Larry David is probably worse. Let's hear your Larry David. I can't do one. Okay, there you go. It's hard for me to do voices without being drunk. So (laughs) my my voice impression career, except for New Yorker, ended three years ago. It's over. It's It's done. It's you're 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 sober. Well, you're you're alcohol sober. I'm alcohol. Which is the best type of sober. Yeah. Yeah. Frankly, everyone's everyone's learning that as they reach their thirties. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what Canada figured out a long time ago. And then the people who keep drinking are like get super defensive about it. <laughs> no, it's actually good for you. It's actually like good for you. Science. <laughs> I think there's just some deep epigenetic memory of drinking. It's just in us. We just love it culturally so much, and, and our our entire system screams out for us to drink constantly in order to socialize and to yeah. get rid of the boundaries that we set up it helps with socializing th- that's for sure that's for sure like is there something you know how like 
uh, in Avatar The Last Airbender, Aang would call upon his past Avatar selves in order to get knowledge. I feel like you get so drunk at the bar that you call upon your past drunk ancestors in order to get their drunk knowledge from them. <laughs> that's just that's just pre-Christian Irish theology. <laughs> <laughs> Great grandfather Idelson. <laughs> <laughs> can you tell me how to get rid of this hangover? You can't get rid of your wee hangover, son. I once had a hangover so bad it fucked me ear. <laughs> I don't know. I can't. I can't speak drunk talk. I don't. I'm not an alcohol person. I've never been. I'm a weed person. Weed. That's why I have this saucy ponytail. Wow. You can't see me, but I have a saucy ponytail now. Nice. You should um, shave the top of your head like a monk. <laughs> You're right. I should have a. I, I, I like the band, the Monks. Is there a band called the Monks? Yeah, you know the band, the Monks. They were a classic '60s band made up of a bunch of uh, American GIs in Germany that uh, uh, played garage rock wow. and had weird themes. How do you know that? How do you know that so well? They're a great band. They're a great band. Uh, I know their history because it's super weird. Uh, I believe um, their their lead singer eventually went on to be like. Oh, they're uh, mayor of a town called Turtle Terrain, Missouri, or something like that. They're quite, so, yeah. they're, apparently, they're quite avant garde. Wow. They're quite avant garde. Wow, quite avant garde. Wow. Uh, one of their songs features in The Big Lebowski, I Hate You, hmm. is featured in The Big Lebowski. Where, what, when, what is, um, what, what scene? I, can probably... I can't remember the scene, mm. but the riff is ding 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 Yes, they were in the 1960s. Wow. We did a cover band of them at at college one time. Who was who? Well, no, no uh, names, no names. Uh, uh, Keep it me anonymous. and uh, Long Island Acid Brother. Long Island and, Acid Brother. And uh, Meek Keyboard Man. Meek Keyboard and, Man. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see who else was in it. I don't know. I'm trying to and describe, giving Mac, mean descriptions Mac of all Miller. our college friends. And yeah. Mac Miller. Uh, R.I.P. Mac Miller. Ooh, dead from the heroin before. He never knew dead COVID. From the heroin. Never even knew it existed. <laughs> He's the reason why Pete Davidson didn't get married. Really? <laughs> no. Well, because remember, Pete Ariana. Davidson was dating Ariana Grande. Ariana and then Grande. Ariana got all busted up about the death of her ex, Mac Miller. Oh, no. Who she, she warned. She still loved time him. Time and time again. Yeah. yeah. You right. know, you it's hard to love a junkie, you know? It is. They you, you you eventually realize you can't fucking help them. Yep. And you still feel guilty when they eventually uh suicide by self-destruction. That's why you got to stick to weed. Mhm. Mm stick to weed like glue. No one ever died of a weed overdose. No, but they've plenty of people have called 911 I think saying that they are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a heart attack right now. I'm having a heart attack. <laughs> I can feel it. My left arm is numb. My left arm is numb. <laughs> Sir, I'm going to recommend that you sit down on the ground and just play with a roller. You know, roll out your back. I taste <laughs> copper. I taste <laughs> copper. Sir, are there pennies in your mouth? No, you have pennies in your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> I smell toast. Uh, are you toasting oh. something? That's not oh. the point. <laughs> yeah. Cop does weed brownies for the first time is a classic uh, 911 audio clip. Yeah. Wow. <sighs> I don't think I've greened out. I've passed out. That's Every time I've been too high, I've just fainted. Really? I've, I haven't gone nuts like that. I haven't yeah. fainted in a long time. Yeah. I miss it. I miss fainting. When did you, were you, did you frequently faint? Yes, when I would wear floral dresses. Growing up in the <laughs> South, I would often be taken of fainting to fainting yeah. on the divan. Uh, oh, my. <laughs> I've heard the most ribaldrous claim. Well, that's not the same. Um, oh, my. I've heard the most ribaldrous claim from Lord Clancy of Southern Bottom. <laughs> <laughs> he says that the pecans are due in July this year around. My I man. cannot abide by late pecans. <laughs> I shove them in my pussy for goodness. <laughs> Sorry, that right. begins the candying there. process. <laughs> <laughs> I 
Lady Fairfax Weatherby. <laughs> Come at me, bitches. I'm Lady Fairfax Weatherby. My bustier will be your bonnet. And I will carry you like the bee in her egg sack to the friendly flavor of Georgia. I, I don't know. I'm just, I'm Very really good. inhabiting this person. I really want to be a uh, lady. What did I call her? Lady Fairfax Southern Bottom? Or lady Fairfax Weatherby? Weatherby? No, Lord Southern Bottom. Lord she Southern was, Bottom. She, she, uh, Lord Southern Bottom informed Lady Fairfax Weatherby that the pecans oh, would be right. due in July. The pecans are going to be due in July. And the candying process will be very late as a result delayed. of it. The candying and process. And that's will much be to the chagrin of Lady Fairfax Weatherby. Mm hmm. Uh, dowager of the of the Goobern plantation in uh, Ogrethel, Kansas. O oh yeah, Ogrethel, Kansas. And of course, uh, Lord Kansas. Southern Bottom is coming from the swampy uh, mucks of Louisiana. As that would be, that would actually be like a Southern fantasy novel, where it's <laughs> like uh, I guess that's what True Blood kind of was, oh, but yeah. it's like it's more like Lord of the Rings, but set in the Deep South. Yeah, True Blood is is uh, Tolkien. In the deep south, yeah, True Blood is absolutely talking in the deep south. That's why there's so many hobbits. But I like the idea of a bunch of dandy Louisiana hobbits. Now, <laughs> come here, and we've prepared a very nice gumbo for you. <laughs> I guarantee this Cajun hobbits. We are short people and have hairy feet and play the accordion. No, I guess the the Zydeco dwarves. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea if we were having Southern Lord of the Rings. Okay, so uh, oh my God, please, I would I just love the idea. So the of the alternate history that the Confederacy won, and they are really obsessed with Lord of the Rings, and <laughs> and they're just retelling it. And so all of the fucking hobbits have. It's about how all <laughs> races of white men can come together and fight. <laughs> The orcs. The, the orcs. It's how all whites can come together, the white race, <laughs> and fight the orcs, who Tolkien clearly meant to represent black people. Oh, As yeah. you can see, the Harudin <laughs> represent the Jews <laughs> and the Muslims. <laughs> They're teaching it in schools. So They're like, yeah. like, right here, line for line, word for word, is what Tolkien said. White supremacist. Said. White supremacist, Lord of the Rings. White, white people. White, white people. White. <laughs> I believe in white supremacy. <laughs> I have this white wedding. That's my favorite Billy Idol's like a white wedding. <laughs> That's the national anthem. <laughs> yeah, it's a nice day for a white wedding. <laughs> it's a nice day to... Start again! Yeah, yeah. the Neo-Confederacy really embraced the start again line. Oh, man. Uh, Those fucking weirdos. These these fucking uh, white supremacist weirdos yeah. everywhere? Yeah, they're everywhere. What the fuck? They're everywhere. I think you just want to feel special for something that you haven't earned or done, but you like want to feel like a connection to something larger than yourself. And instead of investing in the immediate community around you you feel like oh the ghosts of my white ancestors are watching and so uh you know maybe i can become the human instrumentality project with them maybe i can subsume into a big white goo and feel you know uh less of that inherent separation that we all feel as individuals mm. so yeah i think it's this searching for that sense of community in the totally wrong place in this uh, metaphysical idea of ancestry and race as opposed to the people that live next to you yeah shit's getting crazy with the <laughs> with the people in their minds these days you know QAnon, yeah. the whites mm -hmm. it's too much white noise being if crazy you ask me. everyone needs to fucking smoke a bunch of weed and chill out <laughs> yeah Everyone needs to... I, I'm really embracing the Juggalo lifestyle. The Juggalos are proving to be the most, like, resilient in this time anyway, you know? They are who definitely we should consider to elect, you know? I, Kanye well, West, you talk about... fuck you, let's have a Juggalo in the Oval Office. The Juggalos, more than Burning Man, are proof that uh, anarcho-syndicalism works. More, <laughs> more than... 
They're because they are a self-contained community based off of secular values. Uh, actually, no, they're Christian. <laughs> Never mind, Juggalos yeah. are for the most part very. With Christian. enough mushrooms, anarcho-syndicalism can work. <laughs> But you yeah. have to you have to first set up the mechanism for regenerative mushroom magic mushroom growing so that everyone mm-hmm. can stay locked in. Yeah. I think you just need uh, you need ritual and ridiculousness in order to keep believing that there's any sense in the universe. I think you sort of in embracing the absurdity, you create your own rituals. Mm. And I think that is sort of the power of religion. It's and it's what Midsummer is about too. It's like oh, yeah? embracing ritual leads you to fill the emptiness much better than sort of uh, giving in to the logical separation of totally uh, secular, rational yeah. thought. Well, that's good. I mean, I have that inclination as well. Mm-hmm. But as we know, um, the Christian religions often lead to bad shit, too. Except for Quakers. Oh, yeah, except well, for the Quakers. Well, some of them. I mean, I don't know. <laughs> People have just got some bad in them sometimes. I think, yeah. I, I, it's not to me. It's, uh, it's never religion that's to blame. It's uh, religion as an organization uh, is sort of value neutral yeah. in the same way that, or just religion as a concept is value neutral. You can do good as a religion. You can do bad as a religion. Uh, it's really up to the individuals that embrace it. But do I think it is an is it an effective structure for organizing communities? And societies, hell yeah. Mm. It's very powerful in that regard. And to discard it entirely uh, because you don't see value in that utility or you don't see value in its way of persuading people uh, is, uh, I think, a little uh, short-sighted. I feel like, are these themes present in the music of the band Bad Religion? Is there a (laughs) word for, like, atheist but not anti-religious? Yeah, Nick Land talks about that. Oh no! Yeah. <laughs> oh, damn it! You no, yeah. fucking fatties! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> take them. <laughs> Whoops! Ha <laughs> oh, ha! man, but, but I yeah I, I do think uh, I I think in an earlier episode of House of Decline I talked about a second Great Awakening and I re- after researching it a little bit I realized wow we're on the sixth Great Awakening mm-hmm, yeah. by my there have been like five previous Great Awakenings throughout uh, American history Americans and, are very prone to religion we fucking yeah. like it. and and it's been weird to me when because evangel evangelicalism kind of died off after bush during obama and i'm like where'd all the crazy religious nuts go they used to be mm-hmm. everywhere yeah and i i think we're gonna find out in a scary way that they all joined a cult i guess that's what's sort of interesting about trump too like even though religious people do like trump and he does sort of um pay lip service to religious people it's not a religious uh conservative movement on on its surface identifiably it's like it it it, it's stoking fear of racism is sort of independent of uh christian uh gnosticism you know it's like uh, the reason why it does bad is because of a purely almost secular capitalist belief as opposed to, say, the very uh, theologically influenced policy of George W. Bush. Yeah. Yeah. Well, there is uh, like an atheism. Or even the theologically religious... influenced policy of H.W. Right. Or, or Reagan or Eisenhower or all of them. You know, for to some degree, uh, were did allow their Christianity to influence their thinking. Even Johnson, uh, even the, uh, all the Democrats did too. Not and, Clinton. and Obama. Clinton is where it ended. Yeah. No, Obama, Obama did have his own religious stuff. But Obama is a Muslim. Now, <laughs> <laughs> now I will read the lyrics of our Bible. The song American Jesus by Bad Religion. (laughs) Hell yeah. I don't need to be a global citizen because I'm blessed by nationality. What the fuck does that mean? I'm a member (laughs) of a growing populace. We enforce our popularity. There are things that seem to pull us under and there are things that drag us down. But there's a power and a vital presence that's lurking all around. 
Whoa, what is that? Is it candy? I it is candy. the chorus, which is, we've got the American Jesus. See him yeah. on the interstate. We've Hell got yeah. the American Jesus. He helped build the president's estate. Whoa, because he's a carpenter. I'm thinking that this song might be an uh, unreliable narrator. <laughs> what do you think? How would you analyze uh, that? I'm thinking it's uh, a song with the subtlety I would expect from a band called Bad Religion. I want to be part of a Christian Bad Religion cover band called Good Religion. <laughs> Where you just subtly change all... You, you, wait, no, you just sing the songs unironically? Uh, no, no, I don't sing the songs unironically. I, I change the lyrics up to be about Jesus. Oh. Well, this Re- one, I feel that would piss bad religion off. <laughs> I don't know. What are they going to do? They're probably what all you, in their yeah, 70s. I, I, you just say American Jesus. You just say those exact lyrics, but in a really upbeat voice. Yeah. They're all they're all old now, too. Oh, um, we got the American Jesus. See him on the interstate. We got the American Jesus. He helped build the president's estate. You could use those exact same lyrics. Those aren't necessarily bad from a person's point of view. So I like to think that you, instead of the generations changing, we now just have a set archetype generation that you move through as you age. And so when you're from like 18 to 24, you're going to be a Gen Z. From 25 to 30, <laughs> you're a millennial. From 30 to 40, you're Gen X. And from like 40 to 55, you're baby boomer. And that's it mm-hmm. from now on. Instead of having That's generations, we're set just generations. set generations that you move through in your life. You're the Francis Fukuyama, but of generations. This is the end of generational history. Exactly. Now we'll always have snotty e-girls at the bottom of the totem pole, followed by depressed millennials, followed right. by coke-doing Gen Xers, followed by entitled boomers, followed uh, by dying greatest if we take that or dying lost we take that and the switch from capital to information at the same time we can come up with a whole new like hierarchical oppressive system that we could do there you go great what if yeah what if ageism what if we just Mm -hmm. like what if we started what if you worked until 30 and then you got educated and you could retire at 30 yeah yeah Mm-hmm. Only child labor. Yeah. Like you start working at eight oh, and right. then you retire at 30. And that's when you start learning. Mm-hmm. Exactly. There you go. We're going to we're going to do this. We're going to do this. You and me. We're going to start a commune. Yeah. And we're going to be the ageist commune. It's called the the ageist commune. The young workers commune. We we replace classes <laughs> with ages. Yeah, you're right. That's what we have to do. So everyone who aged five Strict to... Strict categories. Everyone aged five to ten procure, procures the fuel for our fires. But, sir, I want to keep working. No! Get in the mines. That's not how this works. You get in the mines. Study! <laughs> <laughs> so we make the five to ten-year-olds coal miners. They're the coal miners, the right? Because their little bodies can reach the rocks better. <laughs> right. <laughs> then uh, the, the uh, 18 to 24-year-olds... Are the musicians and the poets? Yeah, because they have the most angst. Because they have, they yeah, have they have the, the most. most uh, yeah. They care the most about whatever bullshit they're feeling. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, from uh, twenty-four to thirty, that is uh, administrative. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's admin. Boring work. time. Oh, yeah. man, HR. Fuck. Yeah. And the thing is, that, yeah, if you survive five to ten, you know. We yeah. can get rid of the weak ones. Easy. And then you Easy. you retire at 30, and you can choose to become an educator or a baby maker. Or no, I'm sorry, not <laughs> a, a student or a baby maker, I guess, right? That's true, yeah. The educators are actually paradoxically uh, the 15-year-olds. And I'm hoping by this point, too, we've eliminated the need for two people to reproduce. I'm hoping we have asexual yes. reproduction, of course. It's going to be asexual reproduction. It is reproduction. the only humane goal that we need to tend towards, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. Once we can rid the human of the pain of relationships and just have asexual reproduction, then we will... Um, we will... We've actually prepared an audio <laughs> clip of what this asexual reproduction will sound like. It's, it's going to sound like this. Oh, God! Oh, God! Oh, God! A baby boy! And that's what it's going to sound like. Wow, that was a beautiful birth scene. Beautiful birth scene? Beautiful birth scene. You know, it's 
it's one of the most beautiful audible things that happen in um, our <laughs> new in our new commune ageist community. Yeah. Asexual birth is a is yeah. a, wow, wow. If you want to see what it looks like, subscribe to our non-existent Patreon. Yeah, go to um, www.houseofdecline.com and then buy that website and then give us the rights to it but also set up your own whatever you wanted to see and then you can just go there live asexual reproduction that's the name of the game that's the new pornography you know want to get wet want to get juicy get asexual you know i i want a body Ace horror. Is high. i want like a body horror movie that's about a scientist discovering how to do asexual reproduction <laughs> that would be pretty be funny. Cool. Uh, it'd be uh, he's it'd, it'd be called buddies because he just he's a he he uh, he studies fungus and he gets, starts getting uh, little faces budding off of him oh. and eventually <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. it's pretty disturbing. Nice. That'd be funny. A comedy body horror movie. We haven't had. I think coronavirus is going to result in more body horror or disease oriented horror movies. Let's hope they're my favorite ones. Yeah, they're good. I want to see. There's nothing else that makes me feel worse than like feeling that there's something wrong inside me and there's nothing I can do to fix it. Yeah, yeah, that's the worst horror there is, man. Like fuck cosmic horror. Cosmic horror is like, oh, there's something so big I can't understand it. Well, that's just living in the world, you know. That's like whatever. I do that shit every day. Never hold. If you're ever nailing something, never hold nails in your mouth. <laughs> you are because yeah. you can inhale them and then you'll have the feeling of there's something inside you doing damage and there's nothing you can do that'd be a good final destination death just a really slow one just oh <laughs> it's tearing up by his arm ow. again ow ow ow, ow. ow. we got to get you to a hospital i'm going into shock this is my final destination yeah. it's taking forever <laughs> to get there i swallowed a <laughs> nail <laughs> You do, you know. I'm gonna do a Final Destination movie, but it's just always like really tearful scenes of people dying from like hepatitis or something like that. <laughs> it was coming for me. There was nothing I could have done to avoid this fate. <laughs> <laughs> I I played. I tricked death. Death wants his comeuppance. Oh boy. Well, <sighs> you wearing talking about a Final Destination. You wearing your mask. You wearing that no. mask. No. No one in Toronto wears their fucking mask. What? You gotta wear a mask, dude. Dude, dude. There are a lot of there are a lot of fucking mask perverts out there. It's more it's more prevalent in America. I get why in America. What do you mean it's more prevalent? Because of no, I mean y you guys have a much higher infection rate, so like people getting bitchy about masks is uh, more of a thing. Well, also I just, I mean I don't know. I bet the Canadian right wingers are pissed about wearing masks. I bet they don't oh, want to yeah, do it. Oh yeah, they're absolutely actually i don't know because like i've said before canada is a country well the english-speaking parts of canada are a country with greater cultural compliance than america hmm. even if like they're republicans they tend to be like they tend to go with the, even if they're conservatives they tend to go with the flow when it comes to big federal mandates yeah uh because i think we just have way 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 more faith in our government because we take immense pride in our universal health care, even if it is literally the shittiest form of universal health care in the world, it's still better than America. Yeah, well, we Americans are like, if if anything bad happens, that's it. Another civil war. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of crazy. It's like, I, mm -hmm. I don't even think we have two identifiable sides that could face off in a civil war. If we have a civil war, it's just going to be like every man for himself version and then yeah, like well, whoever, wins at, the, um, whoever wins yeah, at the, the end. Balkanization. Whoever wins the at the end. The balkanization of America. Ugh. So unfortunately boring. We're not going to even split have like up. strategy. We're not going to have great no. generals. Are we going to have it's even... It's just going to split up into regions. <sighs> We're going to have New England as a region and then the, the independent Midwest states and then Cascadia. Cascadia. And then... Tennessee. I don't know. Tennessee is going to yeah. just become a huge area. And then, confusingly, we decide to put Palestine in the middle of uh, Virginia, and that just causes a lot of problems. Oh, you mean we make we make a time. we keep Israel where it is, but now we have to make a country called Palestine, yeah, for all the Palestinians. Yeah. 
Well, what and we then... do is we create like a Mormon-like gospel for Islam, where it turns out that Muhammad was in America, and so uh... so you want to put Palestine in like West Virginia, and then turn all of the displaced West Virginian hillbillies into radical terrorists. Yeah, yeah, fantastic they'll, they'll... idea. We'll form Gaza in, in West Virginia. <laughs> Gaza, West Virginia. Great. Just, yeah, make it illegal for them to hold jobs. <laughs> Checkpoints. Which apparently is what, that's what I think Laura Ingraham tweeted, that Joe Biden was going to make it illegal for you to have a job. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. I don't know. That I is a direct so. quote from Joe Biden. I've... Play the audio. Now, here's what you want to make it illegal to have a job, you know? Ah, oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> he could have easily said that, you know. Joe Biden recently said, vote for Joe Biden's husband, Joe Biden. <laughs> <laughs> okay. See, this is why I think Joe Biden is going to win, because you just can't be mad at the guy. Well, He's the worst. He no. He's the fucking worst. No, no, no. I have a, I, he laughed after that also. He said it, and then he laughed. Yeah. And so I'm thinking now, this guy knows exactly what he's doing. Yeah. He's yeah. playing he this up. Because that's what pe people are going to... It's This is actually... Attra like Some people think it's not attractive for the... Other, for other people, this is exactly what they want. They want just lovable old guy who's like going to, I'm calling the shots. <laughs> I think it's so funny that Biden, for just fucking 40 years, wanted to be the Democratic presidential nominee. And he kept fucking it up in various, like the first time he did it right, he plagiarized the speech famously, which is why he got shit canned. The thing is, um, Biden is actually the perfect candidate and all the... Bernie people need to calm down and accept that Biden, yes, is, yeah, he's not, he does not hold political, good political views about doing anything, but he can defeat Trump. And mm -hmm. that is more important unless you're an accelerationist. Uh, I'm a tad acceleration. -y. Well, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think we need to have Trump anymore. Why not just have Biden? I'm sorry. Yeah. I'm sorry. He's going to continue American imperialism. I'm sorry. To the people yeah. of Venezuela, I apologize. And to the people of Iran. Sorry you guys only had, um, you know, religious fanatics left mm. after we killed the good the good guys. But Do you think uh, be Biden better. would have fucked up COVID this bad? <laughs> yeah, probably. Yeah, probably. <laughs> yeah. America sucks, man. <laughs> you can't tell Americans to put masks on. You got to do reverse psychology. Don't put masks on. Yeah, you got to be like... <laughs> Go ahead. Go out and play in the sun. What are you, chicken? Because the Americans are like... The number one thing for Americans is like, I don't like to do what the government says. Hmm. Bleh. Better want to do it. <laughs> My taxes are stupid. Like, Americans hate paying the, the taxes. The government. Yeah. It should, be, it should be great because you should be like, this is where I... It's like I feel good about making this contribution to what my society is trying to accomplish. But nobody feels like that. Okay, so it's always the... So remember uh, Obama got in trouble for talking about uh, taxes as if, like, you see everything over there? You didn't build that. You didn't build that. You know, and he uh -huh. got in trouble for saying that. But it's like you could articulate that so easily in that... Like, you see those roads? You built that. You see that hospital? You built that. You see that, you know, that's how you can articulate taxes as a sort of a nice way to people. Yeah. It's like you get a stake in your community by contributing to it, even in a passive way. Isn't that cool? Why don't you find that cool? Because no one likes anything anymore, because everyone has been lied to over so many years. Mm. It's just been like the institutions that occupy the things our taxes pay for have been lying to us about just like loads of shit pollution yeah. from pollution to global warming to the economy to you know class mobility i mean do you think yeah. we should practice a more radical transparency in our government do you think that all records everywhere should be available to the panicky masses um yeah, I, I don't know. Yeah, more transparency, sure. Records, yeah. sure, I don't know. The panicky masses? 
But what like are they going to do? What are they going to do with this information? Panic in more? That, in that sort of meta economy of information, you know, that's what the government represents is a consolidation of uh, information that only they can know about and that they use. That, that's what the deep state is, essentially, this cabal of tree god power people. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, the deep state is like the people who organize the census. The census is, and this it's remarkable. Americans still have a remarkable degree of compliance when it comes to the census, which I find interesting. Because, like, the census is what enables them to tax us efficiently. Okay? Mm -hmm. That's what it's for. You, you should not fill out the census if you don't want to pay taxes. Uh, one of my, fav my new favorite politically correct terms, which is now found on the census, is AAPI, which stands for um, Asian American Pacific Islander, mm -hmm. which they now lump into the same category. But my immediate thought is get AAPI financing, which is like... <laughs> so I get, do indigenous people... I don't want to get canceled, but did indig who can... Was there a consultation about the new term by, by POC? Because... Did indigenous BIPOC? Yeah. Did indigenous people and black people decide together that that's what they want to be? They, I I don't think that's how that works. What, I don't think like you get all the indigenous and black people together in a room. Why not? That's the only way to do it fairly. I no. I think there have been like uh, activist and academic consortiums of black and indigenous uh, people that realize their shared struggle is very similar uh, in in ways that Asian uh, immigrants don't have in America mm -hmm. in a way that uh, a Asian people are racialized in America very differently than black and indigenous people. Um, I mean, before the 60s, Asian people were racialized in the same way as black and indigenous people in that they were thought of as a labor class and used to that extent. The, the racism was used against them to keep them as the uh, cheap labor class. Mm -hmm. But when the 60s happened and when they opened up um, Asian immigration, uh, uh, lots of wealthy Asian immigrants started coming in and the stereotype changed. Uh, yeah. So I guess that's a good sum summary of it. Yeah. So I think there's like, um, I think the reason why, uh, whereas black and indigenous people didn't really experience like where African and Caribbean immigrants actually do represent an upward mobility in, in black communities in the same way that the Asian Amer Asian immigrants in the 60s did. Um, for the large uh, majority of African Americans, they sort of represent this uh, culture that was blighted by the institution of slavery and the use of racism as a justification for that slavery. In the same way that indigenous land was taken and they were exploited for the exact well, same you, reasons. As you know all about that as a Canadian. I don't know nothing yeah. about that. Well, yeah, that's our that's our shit. That's, that's your shit. That's your bag. Indigenous exploitation. Um, well, so yeah, I don't. Think, what do you think, think the uh, like, champagne uh, sharks guys would say? I don't know what the champagne sharks. Those guys always have. I always think they're going to think one thing and then they think the other thing. Or they think th a thing that I haven't even thought about. That's sort of why I like champagne sharks a lot, because they offer very, hmm, I haven't even thought about that takes. Yeah, they're cool. They're smart uh, yeah, guys. Yeah, shout, shout out to T and the rest at uh, Champagne Sharks. Good podcast. Challenging Recommend. to your assumptions yeah. always. Very challenging to your assumptions. They, they will make you think in ways you hadn't thought before about the black issues and other issues. But a lot about black issues. I was Ugh. I was listening to them when I accidentally called nine one one. By <laughs> oh yeah, I was I got my new phone and it had this thing I didn't know about. Um, where if you press the power button five times, it calls nine one one. So I mm -hmm. had it in my pocket and I pressed what I thought was the volume button to turn the volume down on the champagne sharks. And instead, <laughs> <laughs> and instead, the next thing you know, I was hearing nine one one in my headphones. And I didn't oh, have man. I didn't have headphones with a microphone, so I had to like fumble with it. So the nine one one person was suspicious, and I was like, "No, it was an accident. It was an accident. It was an accident. No, 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 no. It's an accident. It was an accident. Got a new phone. Oh man. They're like, okay, fine. And then they sent the police. <laughs> I, had, I had one star on GTA. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, GTA! There's a game that needs a sequel. <laughs> well, get on it, Rockstar. Yeah. I need more industry crunch. 
work those programmers to death if you have to make a GTA 6. Oh. I want an Asian protagonist this time. I want a triad protagonist in Hong Kong. That would be super cool, actually. Take notes. Um, yeah, Rockstar always manages to somehow not get canceled. Uh, I think, yeah, that's super weird because their games are super cancelable. But I think everyone just loves them. They're so popular. Um, I And I think it's... It's just GTA generated so much controversy uh, right around the time of GTA 3 and mm -hmm. Vice City and San Andreas that I think the sort of media got controversied out with GTA. Yeah. It sort of became old hat after a while. Like as the, the like San Andre like the hot coffee mod was sort of <laughs> I remember part of that first wave of Jack Thompson, you know, video games are turning our children into lewd criminals. I guess there was that before the video games weren't really married to the satanic panic of the 80s, but Doom is when, like, the video games and violence things first started happening. Yeah, the Columbine shooters. like, a shooters. strong reaction to Doom. Columbine yeah. shooters played Doom. Quake mods. And, um... <laughs> those games are so unrealistic, it's hilarious to go back yeah. and look at those games and imagine that they are what caused those kids to shoot up that school. Yeah. As opposed to white supremacy, which is what actually caused it is that what it was, it was is that what yeah they were yeah people don't recognize people think that columbine is like a run of the mill it's not a show shanghoi school shooting it is an act of domestic white terrorism mm. white terrorism Quats. um because that's of, what um, people didn't because of the uh, timing of it you think it was hitler's birthday yes but also uh, Timothy but that, McVeigh that was deliberately a part of it the, yeah the mcveigh continuation of the mcveigh bombing. oh yeah Harris and Claybold were absolutely inspired by that as well. They were very... It, it was an act of... Um, and if you go back and read their shit, they they were trolling around with a lot of white supremacist ideas. That's how they became radicalized. It wasn't... Uh, it wasn't the Vidja games. It wasn't the Marilyn Manson. Yeah, so it was the, the proto, secret Nazis. Proto-Boogaloo boys. Yeah, proto-Boogaloos. Yikes. Um, and, you know, combined with that, obviously, was whatever type of psychological diagnosis you want to give to whatever shooter they were um, according to gus van zant a little gay for each other oh mm, mm. <laughs> elephant refers to your deck your deck trunk <laughs> elephant's a great movie it is a good movie yeah. i like gus van zant he he he's real hit or miss i re i love hit or miss directors mm -hmm. that's why spike lee is my favorite because he's the ultimate hit or miss guy. baz lerman's hit or miss He's missed. He's, he's just, just missed, been missed, missed the whole time. <laughs> it's all sucks. Why do people think Baz Luhrmann is good? <laughs> Moulin Rouge is terrible. It's so annoying. Uh, he's hit or miss, you know? Yeah. It's been a series of misses, but he's hit or miss nonetheless. Mm -hmm. He's still in the category of hit or miss. I mean, a go. baseball player who's never hit a, b a ball, <laughs> is he a batter? You know? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's a philosophical question, you know. Yeah. If a if a if a Moulin Rouge opens up in the woods and nobody's around to see it, does it make a sound? Moulin Rouge is that a Disney movie with Mulan? That's a Baz Luhrmann, yeah, <laughs> Moulin Rouge. It's where Mulan becomes a whore. <laughs> <laughs> An ancient Chinese whore. What's the one? It's not ancient. China. What's the song where they're they're like um, training? Dun, 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 dun. Uh, let's get down, down to, to business to, to defeat, defeat the Huns. Yeah, that's a good one. When I asked for daughters, <laughs> did they give me daughters? When I asked for sons, dramatic irony, because Mulan is actually a lady, a lady gash. Whoa! And she's gonna fuck up the whole yeah. Chinese army. So yeah, I, I've made the observation before that Mulan is the coolest Disney princess because she's the only one that murders hundreds of people. Yeah. With the avalanche, <laughs> yeah, yeah, she kills hundreds of people. Hell yeah, Mulan, that's awesome. Yeah, and she even she blows up a guy. That's her arc as a character is fucking blowing up a guy. Yeah, but she has PTSD. <laughs> yeah, uh, they don't deal with that in Mulan two. Yeah, Mulan two Electric is about how Google Mulan Wars. is incapable of conceiving of a future for herself or her children because <laughs> she is yeah traumatized. She's got PTSD. By war. <laughs> yeah, and she she smothers her 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 favorite daughter. Yeah, it's very sad. Mm -hmm. It's real, hundred percent based on a true story. 
<laughs> China, she just sees China going through endless cycles of war yeah. and can't handle it. She sees the shifting of dynasties and it brings tears to her eyes, saying that the China that I fought for <laughs> is going to be eroded and eliminated. Come with me now, Mulin. I will choke you. <laughs> That's Mulan too.